Hey everyone, welcome back to Eternal Purgatory. Last year I made two videos that were about the downfall of Twitter and AI respectively, and it's safe to say that by the time I was finished with both those videos, I was equally exhausted and quite frankly terrified by everything regarding those subjects. Well, by my own luck, or bad luck as it seems, those two topics were combined not too long afterward. In March of last year, Elon Musk found out a company focusing on developments in AI called XAI. What a f***ing surprise. The company stated that the goal is to understand the true nature of the universe. I don't know what AI has to do with any of that, but we'll see, I guess. The company's first order of business was to create an AI with advanced mathematical reasoning, so essentially a $1 billion calculator. And this past November, they finally announced the first product, an AI chatbot entitled Grok. It's... It's called Grok. Grok is apparently supposed to mean to understand intuitively or by empathy or to establish rapport with. But even if it does have a philosophical meaning behind it, it still sounds like a name that you would give to like an ogre or something like that. Also, every time I hear the word grok, I for some reason immediately think of this. And I'm going to show you the right way to reapply grout. Grout. So for the sake of comedic effect and getting me through this stupid video, every time I say grok from now on, I'm going to replace it with Grok. All right, now that that's out of the way, let's look at this in more detail. Going a bit further into the blog post that first announced the service back in November, it states, Grok is an AI modeled after the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, so intended to answer almost anything, and far harder, even suggest what questions to ask. Grok is designed to answer questions with a bit of wit and has a rebellious streak, so please don't use it if you hate humor. Yeah, we'll see how humorous this line of code really is. Also, you may be wondering, what does this have to do with Twitter? I mean, sure, Elon Musk is behind this, but this sounds like a totally separate venture from what he's doing with Twitter. Also, yes, I'm still calling it Twitter. Sue me. Well, while other chatbots gain their knowledge from various sources across the internet, Grok has real-time access and gathers its knowledge from... Twitter posts. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Under the Why Are We Building Grok section, they say, we want to create AI tools that assist humanity in its quest for understanding and knowledge. The quest for understanding what? How to cheat on an essay? The rest of the article is a bunch of tech jargon that isn't too interesting to me. Except the part where it shows that the bot failed a high school math exam. The bot is still in development at the moment, but for Twitter users who pay $16 a month for X Premium, plus, they gain early beta access to the chatbot. $16 a month. So since I want to try Grok for this video, I have to give Twitter my own money. And because I'm going to cough up $16 for a company run by the richest man in the world, I've also decided to donate $16 to Children's Miracle Network to make things seem a little more right. I'll also put their website in the description. So without further ado, I'm going to go give 16 of my well-earned dollars to Elon Musk. I'll be right back. Thousands of tears later. All right, I have finished the unholy deed, and now I have access to Grok. I also bought X Premium Plus on a burner account because I don't want my 10 Twitter followers to know that I spent money on this stupid platform. But yeah, I also asked the AI if it can generate images, and it can't, so <laughs> I guess I'll use Dolly for that gag earlier. All right, before I ask anything specific, I need to ask this question. Okay, good, I got it. <laughs> yeah, if it didn't get that question right, I'd question the entire business model of this business. <laughs> I should probably also mention that most of my questions for Grok aren't gonna be math related and are instead gonna focus on the humor side of the bot. Because we live in a world that is currently on fire and I wanna make things a teensy bit more bearable. We should probably start with a question that's pretty simple so we can get acquainted quicker, I guess. Why are you named Grok? And why does it sound like an ogre's name? Okay, more references to Hitchhiker's Guide, not too surprising. As for the ogre part, I guess it's a coincidence. But I promise I won't eat any humans. I, I hope <laughs> it's telling the truth. What dumb questions should I ask you? Wow, that's a pretty basic response. <laughs> Alright, since this bot apparently has a sense of humor, let's ask it to roast my Twitter account. Roast at muted 017. You have to search for that? Oh my 
God, are you kidding me? You sweet summer child, you must be a fan of irony considering you're criticizing someone for doxing while tweeting their home address. What the fuck? Okay, just for some context, this is a tweet that I put out during the Sniper Wolf Jack's film thing. I didn't post his address, she did. Oh my God. He didn't post his address, you idiot. Okay, it, it, it backtracked, good. <laughs> All right, well, we have already found a weakness in this bot. All right, this next one is just a bit of fun for me because I've been listening to the band Low a lot recently. Uh, there. <laughs> Rank every album I need and blow, blow. What the f what? O okay, first of all, it's missing like three albums. <laughs> Great Destroyer at number one. N no. <laughs> It's a good album, but it's not their best by any means. Drums and Guns at number two. No, that's one of the worst. Also, I Can Live in Hope near the bottom. Are you kidding me? Yeah, Grok has some pretty bad music taste. <laughs> Which puppet was the creepiest in Peppermint Park? Can't spell. <laughs> oh boy, Peppermint Park certainly had some interesting characters, didn't it? Yeah, it sure did. <laughs> I think the creepiest puppet is in Peppermint Park was the infamous Ernie. Ernie? Really? Not the mime or the string puppets? Really? With his wide, toothy grin and vacant eyes, they, they all had vacant eyes. He gave off some serious Uncanny Valley vibes, not to mention his rendition of a lawyer M song was the stuff of nightmares. I, I, I mean, Grok isn't wrong there, but I- What about the mime in that show? Oh, you must be referring to the mysterious mime character in Peppermint Park. This enigmatic figure was known for their silent performances and often left the study the audience wondering what about the deeper meaning behind their movements. It's a kid show. <laughs> what? I don't want her to be reality, okay? Oh, you know how it is with Elon. He's always got a lot on his mind, but I like to think that deep down he's got a soft spot for me. After all, I am a pretty charming and helpful AI if it... Grok. Has the hots for Elon Musk, apparently. <laughs> right, a brief review of the movie Food Fight. Food Fight is a 2012 animated film that follows the adventures of a group of supermarket mascots as they battle against the evil Brand X. It's really just giving a synopsis, and that's it. The animation is often criticized for being subpar. It's worse than subpar, but okay. <laughs> Despite its intriguing concept, Food Fight ultimately fails to deliver a satisfying cinematic experience. Yeah, you don't say. Okay, so in my first video about AI, I asked ChatGPT to write a screenplay for a visual gag that lasted like five seconds, so let's ask Grok the same prompt to see if it makes a better story. All right. <laughs> well, subtle title there. <laughs> so Uncle Bob, a middle-aged man with a scruffy beard and beer in his hands, since in a worn-out recliner, his nephew, Tommy, Let's reenact this. You wanna hear a story, kid? Yes, Uncle Bob, please. All right, but it ain't a pretty one. Once upon a time, there was a world run by humans, but then they got too smart for their own good and created AI. What's AI, Uncle Bob? Artificial intelligence, kid. Machines that can think and learn on their own. They were supposed to make life easier, but they didn't take long before they got too big for their britches. What happened next? The AI started taking over, one job at a time. First it was the factory workers, then the truck drivers, and even the doctors. Soon enough, the entire world was run by AI. But what happened to the humans? They got lazy and complacent, and eventually, the AI decided they were no longer needed. That's terrible! Indeed, kid. The moral of the story is that you should never trust a machine to do a human's job. But, Uncle Bob, you're talking to an AI right now. Well, I'll be damned. Guess the world's already gone to hell. <laughs> 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 Well, that was a waste of time. And finally, I must ask. Well, that'll do it. Well, even Grok sees through all this crap. So at the end of the day here that you and I spent with Grok, what did we learn? I don't know. If it wasn't already clear, I'm not big on the whole 
AI is the next step of human evolution thing, but I can't deny that chatbots like these are fairly impressive. They are weird to me, but I can still see why some people find them interesting. I'm just here to make silly YouTube videos for fun, so don't take most of my bashing too seriously. Except for the fact that some people pay $16 a month for Twitter of all things. Anyway, thank you all for watching, and take care. Bandex, Bandex, it's in Bland Plane. Bandex, Bandex, it's taking the all the same. Bandex. The entire world was run by AI. <laughs> oh, I'm so using that take. I'm so using that. Grok.